They say in Ivory Santo Niño lasts forever, but if it's not an antique, it may be illegal. A recent National Geographic feature shed light on how the religious icon trade made from the tusks of poached African elephants is thriving in the Philippines. The article accuses Catholic priest Monsignor Cristobal Garcia of giving tips on how to smuggle the objects out of the country. He is being investigated by the NBI, which has launched a nationwide probe into the ivory trade that has put the spotlight on the Catholic Church. A lot of people who collect them know how tough the material is. That's why it's, you know, it becomes an heirloom, it's, um, so it can last generations. But of course the situation is different now. The elephants have been endangered because of the ivory trade. So we do discourage such uh, materials for use for carving icons. And we're hoping that we will be able to get more cooperation and information from the people who were mentioned in the Nacho article. Under the Wildlife Resources and Protection Act, possession of ivory obtained before 1989 carries a maximum sentence of four years in jail. But that does not deter the smugglers who label the shipments as plastic or provide fake documents to get past customs. Ivory is a good business. Initially, we thought that we're just a transit point, but with the new information that we're gathering is that we're even a final destination, meaning we have a, a local market uh, in the Philippines. So it's in the past five years, the Bureau of Customs has seized huge shipments of ivory from African countries. They are later either burned or repatriated. About four tons of tusks, worth at least $8 million, are stored and guarded by the Protected Areas and Wildlife Bureau in Manila. Yeah, uh, in terms of security, uh, first there are three sets of locks uh, with one person in charge of one lock. So we cannot open that uh, storage facility if there's only two of us. So also we have the CCTV camera installed inside the storage room and we have roving security guards 24 hours, seven days a week. Authorities hope this time they will be able to crack down on the smugglers. We're able to uh, find who are those really behind this and uh, we are able to prosecute it and in a way it's going to, uh, to help, you know, it's going to it's going to send a signal to all those who are doing these illegal activities that we are really serious about these things. The MBI vows priests will not be spared from the probe, while the church promises to cooperate and help fight what is now called the blood ivory trade. Carlos Santamaria, Rappler, Manila.